Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do your July the 15th, just for today, in a meditation. I hope you're having a beautiful morning. I hope you're having a beautiful morning. I am excited about my day. It's early yet, but I am excited about it. It's 4.41 a.m. where I'm at. Okay, what do we have here? It's entitled Relations with others. <laughs> that word always messes me up. I don't like that word. Relations. I like the word relationship. Relations with others. Okay, here we go. We made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Now that comes from step eight. All human beings struggle with self-centeredness. The chronic self-centeredness that lies at the very core of addiction makes that struggle doubly difficult for people like us. Many of us have lived as if we believed we were the last people on earth, utterly blind to the effect our behavior has had on those around us. The eighth step is the process our program has given us to honestly examine our past relationships. We take a look at the writing we did on our fourth step to identify the effects our actions have on the people in our lives. When we recognize harm done to some of those people, we become willing to take responsibility for our actions by making amends to them. The variety of people we encounter in our day and the quality of our relations with them determines, to a great extent, the quality of our very lives love, humor, excitement, caring. The things that make life worth living derive much of their meaning from being shared with others. Understanding this, we want to discover the true nature of our relationships with other people and mend whatever breaks we may find in those relations. We want to work the eighth step. Just for today, I want to fully enjoy the companionship of my fellows. I will examine my relationships with the people in my life. Where I find I've harmed others, I will seek the willingness to make amends to them. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the wee version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you, God. Grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. What a powerful meditation, talking about our eighth step and becoming willing to make amends to everyone that we've harmed, right? In this eighth step, again, you will hear it say, said very often, it's a list. It's a list and the spiritual principle is willingness. I would say humility too, because it takes a lot to add people to the list that probably more than likely have also harmed us. So this is a list that we're willing to add people that we've harmed and we are also willing to make amends to them. Now, it gives us this example of how our self-centeredness was operative, right, before recovery. And in fact, it probably still is there, right? It doesn't completely disappear because self-concern is innate, right? It's almost natural to want to take good care of yourself and make sure that you are okay, right? But this is to an extreme when we're using, right? In active addiction, it's to an extreme where everything and everyone else is blocked out unless it has something to do with our getting the next one, right? And so what it suggests here is that we are now in a position to have our eyes opened up and be able to be concerned about those around us, those that we have relations with, <laughs> right? We're able to do that today. 
but the condition of those relationships depend mostly upon the type of life that we're living, the quality of our spiritual principles in their application. It talks about love, humor, excitement, and caring. These things that make life worth living, right? But they're worth living because we share them with others. Love of myself, I mean, okay, that's great. So I love myself and I take good care of myself. But love in relationship to others, love is a spiritual principle that really becomes evident in the application of it to other people and to relationships, right? Okay, so this comment here, let me highlight it in case you, you're not following me. Let me highlight it right here. This comment right here, love, humor, excitement, caring, the things that make life worth living derive much of their meaning from being shared with others. So it's important for us to discover the true nature of our relationships with other people and to mend whatever has been broken. And I want to make sure that the newcomer out there, we're not going to be able to mend all of them. There are going to be some people that will not want to deal with us right now. But that doesn't mean that it will always be like that. And the eighth step is not asking you to get out there and do it because that's in step nine. And step eight is asking you to make the list and become willing. And in order to do that, you need to take a look at your relationships and what part of them no longer have spiritual principles in, embodied by them, right? What relationships are you in that there's no love, there's no humor, no one's excited about anything, and no one is acting very caring? And if you're not still in them, which ones? Because relationships is a process, right? It comes from the word re, lay. So it's going forward and backwards, right? So it's really quite constant. Even when it seems to be at a standstill, the standstill is indicative of the state of the relationship. The relationship doesn't just fall off the face of the earth because somebody's mad, right? You can have a, a bad time in a relationship. And in that moment, that relationship is in a very bad state, unhealthy state. But it doesn't mean that you don't have the relationship because if you didn't have the relationship, you wouldn't be considering or thinking about the relationship, the person. I hope that makes sense. I'm just saying that relationships tend to vary in intensity, but because it's at a low ebb doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Because it's at a standstill doesn't mean it exists. Now, there's some relationships we do walk completely away from. That's a dormant relationship, and for good reason. But it doesn't mean that they don't belong on our A step. There's, there, there's a great possibility that this would be someone in the ninth step that, you know, you're not going to be able to make direct amends to because it would cause further harm, but it doesn't mean that you don't put them on the list. I hope this has been helpful because when you're feeling good and you're feeling um, that the relationships that you have that, or just your day-to-day -day living is what it needs to be, you're in a healthy place, right? When you feel that, then everything around you flourishes. But when you don't, <laughs> we can tell, we can tell, and we're probably going to try to stay out of your way because no one wants to invite that negative energy into their lives. Today, just for today, I want for you to fully enjoy the companionship of your fellows. 
I want you to examine your relationships with the people in your life. And where you have found that you've harmed others, I want you to seek the willingness to make amends to them. And that is the meditation for July 15th. Listen, guys, I know there is a group of people out there that are listening to the meditation as a group in a treatment center. And I just want to say welcome, welcome, because eventually you will leave that treatment center and you will need to know where this information can be found. And so make sure that you subscribe on your own personal devices uh, so that you can stay connected. You know, you will find starting out your own day with your own meditation process, your own prayer and meditation process is beneficial. So I just want to say to you, welcome. I know you're out there and everyone else. Thank you. Make sure you like subscribe and share. Let's get this movement going. I thank you guys so much for being with me. I'm going to have a great day. I need you to do the same on purpose. Talk to you tomorrow.